All right, first ride on the Victory Gunner. Essentially, this is the predecessor to the new, more tech-focused Indian Chief. And I've had this motorcycle in my possession for a few weeks now, and I guess here's a first ride, second ride, third ride review? If you didn't know, Victory Motorcycle was discontinued in 2017 by Polaris as they shifted their focus to Indian Motorcycle. It's been talked about a lot, but that left many people to not experience the awesome motorcycles that Victory built, this Victory Gunner being one of them. It's powered by a Freedom 106 engine with 11,000 miles on it on this specific bike, pushing close to 100 horsepower and 110 pound-feet of torque to the crank. This gunner also has a full Two Brothers Racing exhaust system, giving this gunner a sweet note that's not overly loud and it fits my personal taste of plenty of exhaust crackles. I decided to take Gunner out on one of my favorite back roads and give it a proper break-in ride, and previously I've only been riding it on my work commute, which was nothing short of fun either, right? It doesn't take much to get Victory Gunner up to speed, and that's something I really praise it for because it's very easy to maneuver around in the curve and also around the garage. It comes in with a wet weight of around 680 pounds, so that's about what I'm used to on the V-Rod and the 109. The bars on this gunner are not from Witch Doctors, I got that wrong, thank you for everybody that corrected me, these are the Mercenary Bars from F&B Choppers. These bars are a little bit pulled back, which makes it more comfortable for me at 5 feet 10 inches and a 28 inch inseam. Plus, the seat height is only 25 inches, which is, of course, great for short people. I mentioned this in the previous video about the dash and the tail light going out. What I thought would be a simple fuse fix turns out to be not the full story. While out on my ride, the dash and tail light went out again. So I'll be chasing a short or a grounding issue in the wiring in a coming video. Or something, man. These signal lights or this headlight, something's causing this fuse to blow. So I got to figure that out. But this is annoying because I don't know where gear I'm in. But oh well. The gunner has a stock rear suspension set up for 3 inches of travel and the front suspension is set to 5.1 inches of travel, similar to that of the Indian Scott Bobber, although the bumps aren't as bad as the Bobber, but to me I think gunner makes them feel more acceptable. It's like, like I said, it's not overly stiff, it reminds me a lot of the V-Rod, so when you, when you hit a bump it's like it, it's not just like a straight, I guess a jarring hit, but it's, it's, it's firm. And I, I honestly like it. <laughs> and another reason why I need the tachometer is because I can't see how much I'm revving when I'm uh, getting on the bike. I don't know where red line is. Kind of just, I'm getting a feel for the bike. And plus, again, I don't know what gear I'm in. So I'm assuming I'm in maybe third. Obviously, the cornering ability of Gunner is, is not great. I did scrape a reflector by accident, but let me tell you, I did not let that stop me from enjoying this bike. Yeah, man, this is, God, this bike just dips in. It's, oh, God, that hurt. So I got a little too low when I grabbed one of those uh, reflectors in the center. That hurt my foot. <laughs> it felt perfectly at home on the road, but not having the tachometer to see my revs made <laughs> spinning the rear wheel more likely if I dropped to a more lower gear than necessary. That's because this bike does not have a slipper clutch or a drag torque limiter like that of the V-Rod. But in the twisties, this bike really likes sweepers. It doesn't like, I guess, abrupt turns, but definitely you can find yourself having a lot of fun if you just find just sweeping back-to-back -back curves. One mod that's hidden in plain sight is the quarter inch throttle tube mod. This allows for a more responsive throttle. This was not my first time experiencing this mod for Victory. The Magnum I rode also had this. It's like seriously, it's game changing and it is a must have for Victories. However, it is not a good beginner mod because again, it makes the throttle more responsive. So it is a lot easier to whiskey throttle. <laughs> like a quarter of a turn. So instead of going from here to here, to get uh, you know a certain amount, now you go from here to here. So basically, it's like the throttle. It makes the see that it makes the throttle response more uh, active. And I tell you, feel it. That quarter of a turn uh, throttle setup is godly. It is freaking godly, and it wakes this bike up 
so much freaking more. Especially when you dip into these curves, man. These handlebars make this a breeze. Even though one wrong move, and this thing is gonna stab you in the face. On this route, I can tell you that enjoying this gunner wasn't hard at all. It dips into those sweeping curves well, the throttle response was on point, and I was straight up comfortable. On the highway, it's almost the same story. I put more of my weight on the handlebars from the lack of wind protection, but the handlebars do break up the wind a little bit, so it wasn't as awful as the drag bars on the V-Rod or the N109R, but of course, some of you might feel better if you just put a windshield on it, but at that point, you're taken away from that aggressive look that this bike has, so I personally would just leave it the way it is and I guess continue to complain about it. See, like right now, being that I don't have a lot of wind just pushing against my chest, I'm in the most comfortable position ever, <laughs> especially for my height. And as soon as I start getting more of this wind on my chest, that is when it tends to uh, put more pressure on my lower area because I'm holding on. But when I'm sitting in traffic, this is easily one of the most comfortable bikes I've been on. It's just so freaking comfortable, especially for my height. It's perfect. And right now, this isn't bad at all. This is very chill. So this Victory Gunner new was $13,000. And there's a shortage of them right now since Victory no longer makes them. But you can find them for around 7,500, 8,500 bucks. This one is gonna be sold at some point, I think, and it's probably gonna be listed for $8,000. So if you want it, this might be a good time to get you a gunner. Yeah, this is fun, man. I'm having some fun. This is a freaking breeze. This is freaking fun. This bike is a freaking steal, man. For 7,500 bucks. <laughs> oh man, this is crazy. This bike is crazy, man. I've had some of the most fun the last few days riding this bike. I'm saying it again, these are absolute gems in the motorcycle community and to have it for a price like this compared to something like a new chief if you don't want to spend that kind of money it makes you wonder whether or not a victory gunner or any other victory motorcycle would satisfy that craving it just might for you because oh man it's got me thinking yeah man um, i am i'm having way more fun than i thought i was gonna have with this bike like i knew it was gonna be fun but the way that this thing is handling these curves, man, it doesn't have a lot of leaning. Like, it scrapes pretty easily if you, uh, you just throw it into a curve. But so far, other than hitting that reflector, I haven't taken a curve fast enough to where uh, I'm scraping the pain. But at the same time, I'm taking these curves fast enough where I'm still <laughs> having uh, I'm having enough fun, trust me. What, oh, you? I am having enough fun at this speed on this bike. <laughs> I don't have to go through here like a bat out of hell, but I feel like I am. Because, man, it... <laughs> oh, man, this bike is so much fun. Oh, man. I am enjoying myself. As for the styling, again, I love the way that this bike looks. I love that big front tire. I love the way that these bars kind of complement the aggressive styling that this bike has. Of course, they are kind of like dangerous if you look at them from that perspective but i love this military green that the bike has and i love the way that the exhaust complements the lines of the bike truthfully i probably wouldn't change a single thing on this bike i honestly like it the way it is all right i lied to you there is one thing that i would change you know me i like thick rear ends the rear end on this bike is only like a 140 or 150 you got you probably you got to put at least a two uh, like a 200 back there i was gonna say 240 but I would, I would at least put a 200 back there. Just give it a little bit more meat. But at that point, now you got to change out the rear fender because it's not going to fit. But, hey, yo, thick butts matter. Thick butts matter, people. I like thick butts. So, yeah, that's, I guess, the first ride or the first official first ride on the Victory Gunner because this is like my, I guess, fourth or fifth ride on it now. But, like I said, this is a gem of a bike. That motor, that chassis, 
the, the comfort level with the handlebars, even though those handlebars are pretty dangerous, the bike just feels good to ride. And like I said, now I probably put like 60 to 70 miles on the bike today. I got a little fatigue in my shoulders, but it's nothing, I guess, critical. I just could get off the bike and stretch and my lower area is doing pretty good too, but it's a great bike to ride. We're gonna get some more uh, seat time with it. But for those of you looking at a bike that's uh, not super, I guess, expensive, you might want to consider the Gunner. But yeah, if you haven't seen my impressions on this bike yet, you can click right here and it'll take you straight to that video and you'll fall down the rabbit hole that is my time with Victory Gunner. But as always, thanks for listening to my story. I'm going to go figure out what's going on with this fuse on the bike. I got to find this short or this wire somewhere that's touching uh, metal. Um, but yeah, as always, if you're subscribed, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.